is doing well wherever you are here uh, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania or elsewhere. I noticed a couple of the people in the, uh, in the list of individuals, uh, some former students, some, some contacts that I've made while I've been here at Happy Valley. So uh, it's great to be able to uh, talk to you through, through this screen. Please, uh, as Katie mentioned, please feel free to, uh, as we're going, type questions into the chat. Uh, we can stop. I just have kind of a basic presentation of my history before and during Penn State, different businesses that I've, that I've started, that I've closed down. And I just wanted to have a fun little half hour conversation with all of you of, of how you can start a career in entrepreneurship and, and how you don't need to, you know, especially during your college years, you, you don't need to take these huge risks that could, that could hurt you long term uh, because you do have that safety net of, of being in in school. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to keep the chat up. You shouldn't be able to see it, but if for some reason it pops up and uh, it blocks anything, again, just let me know in the chat if there's anything wrong. Um, I, as an improviser, I'd much rather be talking to you uh, or talking with you than, than at you. So, okay. I'm going to start with a nice photo. So this is over 9 million minutes ago, actually 10 million, I think, updated. This is myself and my sister at my high school. So I grew up in upstate New York, about 40 minutes south of Montreal. So we're talking about on the Canadian border. There's only like 3,000 people in my little metro area. Super, super tiny. I'm a first generation college student. I don't think I knew what the word entrepreneurship was until at least my second, third year of college. I didn't know that you could like go to school for business or for entrepreneurship. I, I ended up being a math major when I got to my undergrad because I was good at math. And throughout high school, not a lot of people in my high school went to a four year college. We, we pretty much just picked what we were good at. And I'm glad because my math degree helped me with my economics degree, which helped me get into grad school, which helped me be here at Penn State, which I absolutely love my job. So I'm not discounting it at all. Um, I just, I've, I've made it a point to, to do talks like this uh, both to uh, people that are in college, but also at high schools uh, to, to really get the idea of entrepreneurship and business out to uh, maybe people that were like me um, 9 million minutes ago. So that's me. This is my sister. My sister, Danielle, doesn't like when I use this photo. Uh, to, for those of you who may have taken me in the class, you may have seen this photo before, but this is us uh, right before we're about to go on a bowling trip because my dad ran a bowling alley, which I'll talk a little bit about as well. So we move ahead a little bit in time for me. This is uh, my education. I went to Western New England University, which is in Springfield, Massachusetts, a very small liberal arts school. I will be paying those student loans for another 20 years because, you know, that's how it goes sometimes, which again, I'm not complaining because it put me where I am now. I then went to graduate school at UC Irvine. So when I was an undergrad, I wasn't running any businesses, but I'd always had this I've always had this itch to like have something that I was, I don't know if it was in control of or just running or just trying to uh, work through problems. Uh, so I did do some tutoring when I was in, when I was in undergrad. Um, I started a blog when I was in undergrad called Major League Sarcasm. It's dead at this point, but it was me and two of my friends who were really into baseball and we would write uh, humor posts like onion, like the onion, like sports articles. So uh, I guess I've just always had this little bug about uh, trying to do stuff. I went out to California for my uh, PhD program in economics. Uh, when I, uh, and, oh, and in between these two, I worked, I actually did work in finance. So I get a lot of students who are business majors and are like, why should I listen to you if you've just done econ? No, I did work at Miss Mass Mutual during the financial crisis. So I got a lot of insight into, into that. It's a Fortune 500 company. And my first really dip into entrepreneurship was when I was at uh, the University of California, Irvine. So I was in Southern California. I really missed the teaching aspect of what I wanted to do with my life. You see, in grad school, especially for the first year, you spend a lot of time just studying for your classes and a lot of time thinking of research ideas. I was not uh, excited about that research part. I really wanted to teach. And I decided I was going to start doing some tutoring on the side. The tutoring that I did uh, wasn't a lot, but I felt like I wanted to get the experience of running my own business and, and learn the ins and outs of uh, starting a sole proprietorship and filing taxes and, and doing tax write-offs. So uh, I started a sole prop, which was called ME Tutoring, which was math and economics tutoring, uh, and it grew. Uh, for about three years, I owned this company in Southern California. We uh, ended up buying 
uh, we're renting out a classroom that would that would fit 12 people to have like review sessions. Uh, we got a whole bunch of computers to have people doing some online classes while we were teaching. So it was pretty successful. It was it allowed me to leave my PhD program uh, with a master's degree and teach a few classes at the local community college and support myself living in Southern California. Uh, I was very proud of that and it was a great learning experience. If I could do it all over again, I would do so many things differently. I was really bad at keeping track of like clients and having some sort of spreadsheet with like, you know, nudging people to come back for more tutoring. Uh, but it's things that you learn. And again, this is with no formal training. And I, I don't even know if I knew that there was places you could go for formal training, which I'm going to get to a ton of resources that Penn State and the Invent Penn State initiative get to. So while I was out there in California, I taught at a high school. I taught at two community colleges and I taught at three universities now. So as you can see, Penn State there in the bottom right, that's where I am right now. And I've just completed my sixth year here at Penn State. Uh, so I was at El Toro High School, which is in Southern California, both Irvine Valley College and Orange Coast College. Those were uh, junior colleges, so two-year colleges in Southern California, uh, along with Chapman University and Plattsburgh State University, which were the two universities that I was at before Penn State. Uh, all of this was teaching econ. All of this was still doing some sort of tutoring or something on the side. And the main thing that I was doing on the side, which I never knew would turn into a business, was really just me with my creativity trying to figure out a way to you know do the econ stuff i really like teaching i really like learning about economics but i had this creative side that i've had since high school with like writing and comedy and so i did a little bit of stand-up this is a photo from a long time ago one of my first stand-up shows uh, and this is a photo of doing some improv that i did out in california and it finally occurred to me that maybe what i could do was do something around improv and theater and how can I make that into um, a side hustle. So for those of you who maybe never heard the term side hustle, the idea is most entrepreneurs are not having a career in entrepreneurship, meaning that they just start their own business and they put 80 hours a week into it. Those, that's actually um, few and far between. Most entrepreneurs do some stuff on the side, at least at the very beginning, where they have their full-time job, they're working their 40 to 50 hours a week, but then they put in 10, 15, 20 hours a week on the side to some sort of passion project and uh, see where it goes. It's a much easier way to get your, uh, to dip your toes into entrepreneurship without having to, you know, risk your, your livelihood. Uh, so I was trying to figure out like, how could, how could I, how could I do that? Well, there was a little bit of a hiccup in there. So this, which is a photo that I show uh, my students during class, this is on my wedding day, which was six years ago this past week uh, with my beautiful wife, Kimberly, and this is me, uh, 20 pounds heavier. So moving out to the East Coast did help with my, uh, I didn't eat as many tacos, I think is, is, is what it was. So we got married and we had two dogs, which are beautiful dogs. And you might be like, well, where does this come into to entrepreneurship? Are you just wanting to show us uh, cute photos of your dogs, which A, yes, that's one thing. Uh, this is Penny on the left, Dakota on the right. But one time, so if I go back here, I was with my wife out in California and we have our dogs and I was sitting there drinking some micro brews at my in-laws house and they had their dogs there. And I went and I checked in my beer. So I don't know if any of you have ever heard of the app untapped it is an app where you can keep a log so you keep a log of all the different micro beers you've tried uh what ones you like which ones you didn't like and then you can earn badges and you can earn status for the number of beers the different types of beers and so it just keeps everything kind of uh consolidated for you so you can remember what you ended up uh, having and i thought huh I wonder if there's an app like this, but for like your family dogs, like when you go out and you meet dogs at the dog park, when you go and you're, uh, you're on a walk in State College or you're, you're on campus and there's a, there's a cute little chihuahua walking around and you pet it, like is there a way that you could keep track of that? And so I had this idea and I talked to my wife and I talked to two of my good friends and they're like, oh yeah, that would be interesting. I don't know if it has any legs, no pun intended, but it might be something to explore. So I had no idea how to like start a tech company, 
like how do I start an app? I don't have any coding skills when it comes to like iOS or Android apps. And so the first place I went to is I did a Google search here at Penn State. This was my second year here at Penn State. I did a Google search for entrepreneurship Penn State and it came up with the Happy Valley launch box. So Katie mentioned one of my, uh, one of the things I do on the side is I do some, I do a little bit of consulting and just coaching at the Happy Valley launch box for student run startups. So they do a ton of different programs at student brand startups. And if you have any idea of like, Hey, I think I want to, I want to either start a business or I just want to be in that startup culture. Perhaps you're like, Hey, I have these skills and I want to join a startup team. I would always start at happy Valley launchbox. All of the resources at happy Valley launchbox are free to both you as a student, faculty members, community members. It's part of a huge initiative uh, with the Penn state system called invent Penn state, trying to amplify startups and amplify entrepreneurship in in the Commonwealth. So I would strongly suggest checking this out. I, I just, I Googled it and the director of Happy Valley Launchbox, uh, her name is Dr. Lee Erickson. I sent, uh, I sent Lee a, an email of like, Hey, this is my idea. And I have no idea where to start. Um, Lee was very, very welcoming, set up a time with me the next week. And we went in and we just had a conversation about what possibilities we had. Most students that I talk to, cause again, I teach about a thousand students a year. Most students that I talk to have never heard of the launch box. It's just, it's a, it's a hidden gem for all of the Penn State students, faculty, and, and community. I have a photo of it up here, and it's just right up Allen Street. So if you were at the gates, if you're at the gates on Allen Street, and you just walked two blocks up on your right, there's this big building uh, with the launch box logo on it. It's right now it's not open due to COVID-19, but once we get back to having normal hours, you can just walk in there any day, any weekday from eight to 4 p.m. and just talk to people about starting. They also have two different clinics in there right now. One clinic is about uh, forming like LLCs and, and forming the, the legal side of things. There's a legal clinic. And then there's also an intellectual property clinic that they have. So you can go in there if you have some sort of idea that you want to patent or copyright, they'll help you out free of charge. The only thing you have to pay, uh, whatever the state or the local fees would be associated with any of it. So I strongly suggest checking it out. My wife and I went through this thing called the Fast Track Accelerator. So you can see my wife down there on the right and me on the way far right. Uh, we went through what they what was a 15 week accelerator program. These are pretty popular around the country where you come up with an idea and they put you through week by week different exercises to try and grow your business and to try and solidify what it's going to be. The business that we had idea was this thing called Pets I've Met. Pets I've Met was a mobile app that you could uh, check in, you could, you could log all of the different animals that you've met. So we call it a pet passport. And you could uh, say the type of animal. So like I met a dog and it was a chihuahua and the name was Malie and she was six years old and you could put notes and everything in it and you could share the photos um, on different social medias. You could, you could um, um, friend other people, you can make contacts. And so that was our, that was our idea. We ended up uh, raising a little bit of money and getting the app developed. And we were at a stage where the app was running at about 90%, which was good enough. We were starting to get some users and we were at a crossroads. And that crossroads was, do we put a lot more time into it trying to monetize? Because at some point you've got to monetize your product. And really we could have done advertising, but advertising, you probably need about a million people looking at your app for you to make enough money advertising when we definitely didn't have that. So we had some ideas of making it interactive with a map and perhaps finding all of the pet friendly businesses here in state college and then expanding. Uh, we thought of, you know, maybe just selling uh, targeted ads of just going to local businesses to say, hey, most of our users are here in State College, so maybe Whiskoys or, or Paws. And, and we also thought about raising money through the app and taking a small portion, kind of like Facebook was. So we had these ideas. And, oh, hi. Oh, yes, we got a question. Yay. I'll get to that in a second. So, um, so I'll, I'll get to that in a, question, a second for sure. So we have this, uh, so, so that, was, uh, that was our idea. And we decided not to pursue it after the accelerator. And the main reason for that, well, here's a, here's a pick. So this was, so this was like my, my profile at one point. 
So it had uh, my, my, my dog, it had my sister's dogs. Oh, and also, this is the cool thing about this. I always get excited when I talk about it because it was a, it was a project of mine for about a year. Uh, you would have a camera roll and in your pet passport, you would keep all the photos you kept of that dog. So you could see Penny, which is my current, which is one of my dogs. I had 17 photos in this photo roll. So you could scroll back and you could see the specific dog, uh, which was kind of cool. I thought it was cool. A lot of people did, but not cool enough for me to quit my job and to, and to focus on it. And the main reason why, hold on, actually, let's stick here. Let's go, let's go to uh, Clark's question. So there's a question in the Q&A, and I'd rather just answer them when, when we get to them. And it's, uh, as an international student, and they have a company, and they want to get some legal help and registering, uh, yes, I would 100% talk with Happy Valley Launchbox. The, the, the website, is is launchbox.psu.edu. Uh, there's a guy named Tom Sharbaugh. He runs the legal clinic. I would email him and I would also email Lee Erickson. They're both working remotely during this time and they can 100% figure out a way to help you uh, register uh, the organization. Maybe, um, you know, if you want to have it as an S Corp or an LLC or a sole prop, whatever you think you need. Uh, that's where I would start. Uh, so I can actually type that into here. I would go to launchbox.psu.edu. I'm going to put this in for everybody that they can see. Um, so yeah, so thanks for the question. One of the main reasons, everyone, why I didn't pursue Pets I've Met, uh, A, it was my second or third year at Penn State at this time, and I really enjoy being in front of the classroom. Uh, some of you have had me in class, and I hope you enjoyed being in my class, but I'm, I'm really passionate about education as a whole and, and passionate about being with students and holding office hours and, and seeing them grow and seeing where they end up after after college so i didn't want to have to take time away from teaching in order to put you know 60 70 80 hours a week into um into a startup even though i was passionate about it but also at the same time starting pets i've met myself and three other founders had started um, a local improv company here in State College, which some of you may have, may have heard of, Happy Valley Improv. So here are the four founders, myself there in the middle. Uh, we've got Nate, Andrea, and Sam. We all got together because we liked improv, and there was no improv here in State College other than the student groups. And no offense to all of you students, but faculty, we, we don't want to be telling jokes on stage with, with, with many students. So we wanted to start our own adult improv here in Happy Valley. So we have the Happy Valley Improv. And we are, we went through LaunchBox again. So LaunchBox helped us set up our LLC, helped us set us up our terms of service for our website, uh, helped us design our contracts. So like we go out to different businesses and do workshops. LaunchBox helped us design all of those uh, contracts, helped us with, um, if you want to hire anybody, but you don't, but not as an employee, just as a contractor, like to teach a class, they helped us with those contracts. So they do a ton of stuff over at LaunchBox. So again, I would 100%, if you have any interest at all, I would start there. They're super friendly, super accommodating. And again, free. As an economist, I can't say the word free. There's opportunity cost of your time, but you, monetarily, it's free. So we do a ton of different things. We do classes. We have a very diverse group of, of, of classes that we, that we hold. We have lots of Penn State faculty. We do have some Penn State students that go through it. Uh, we have people from a ton of different communities. Uh, this was a level two class that my, uh, myself and Sam Tanner taught. We also do teen camps. And we're, we're currently running a teen camp right now virtually on Zoom. So this week we did have to pivot. So in entrepreneurship, there's a big term called pivot, where you're going one direction and that's not working, so you pivot to something new. Uh, a lot of companies had to pivot because of COVID-19, and we ended up pivoting to doing some online stuff. Um, and we used to do a ton of workshops, and again, we've pivoted, we've done these workshops online now, and uh, we've done three workshops the last three years with, the, uh, with Katie and, and her team over at the Career Enrichment Network, which has been a lot of fun. We do a ton of different uh, things with it. Um, I want to finish up here and then I'll answer any questions that you may have just in general about entrepreneurship here at Penn State or any questions about my life story uh, and how you can get involved with a few different resources. The first resource I want to give you is invent.psu.edu slash tools slash resource navigator. You can either 
if you just Google resource navigator Invent Penn State, it'll be the first one that comes up. Again, Invent Penn State is the initiative, uh, Dr. Barron is, is one of his uh, main initiatives to try and increase overall entrepreneurship in the Commonwealth. Uh, there are, at last I checked, there was 16 to 19 different launch box type organizations around the Commonwealth, usually connected with one of the Penn State branches. So uh, the Commonwealth campus, like in Altoona and Du Bois, all of them have uh, a launch box area to, uh, that you can go to and that you can uh, get a ton of resources with. So even if, let's say you're not coming back to Penn State in the fall, uh, I would go to, again, the Invent Penn State or the Launchbox page and try and find one near you to, to go and ask questions. Uh, it's, that's the, the best way to get started, and especially in entrepreneurship, is to be networking with people and to find the things that you want to do. So that's really cool. Also, if you are still a student here, especially if you're you know, first, second, even a third year student, there is a program called Entrepreneurship and Innovation. It's the NT program. It's only a minor but it's a minor that anybody in the university can tack on. And what you do is you, you don't have to be in the business school. You don't have to be in engineering or wherever you can, you can join this. It's just nti.psu.edu. And then you take a track. So there's, if I remember correctly, I believe it's six courses and everybody takes like the same two courses, which is like a course in engineering design and, and a course in the business school, like kind of your, your core stuff. And then you get four specialized courses where it depends where you want to be. Do you want to be in the arts side of things? Do you want to be in social entrepreneurship? Are you looking to you know, kind of make a difference uh, in that stuff? Maybe food, bio-innovation? They, they match you with these different, different areas. Uh, I've uh, done a little bit of consulting and coaching with a few of these classes as well. And it has been super fun. We had a team work both on Happy Valley Improv and on Pets I've Met coming out of one of these classes. And it's such a fun, they're small classes, they're like 20, 25 people. And all you're doing is you're working on entrepreneurship, which is super, super fun. Okay, Katie, that's my story. And this is my content. I know I went really fast, but I wanted to make sure that we left at least a few minutes for people if they had any questions. Um, and as always, you can reach me on uh, Twitter, on Instagram. I know a few of the people I saw on the participant list uh, are already connected with me on there. Uh, or you can email me. And if you go to jamesherney.com, there's, there's a contact thing right there. So, all right. Well, thank you, James. Does anyone have any additional questions? I'll give you a minute or two to pop them into the Q&A box or the chat box. In the meantime, great resources. It's a great connection to hear your story and also as Penn State students to hear the wonderful resources that are already available. And President Barron's initiatives have been wonderful. Coming from a campus myself, working there before here at University Park, it, the launch box was very successful um, for the region. So it's a great idea. Yeah, I mean, it's, and you know, it's a lot of people are like, oh, it's, it's only for Penn State, you know, faculty or, or Penn State students, but it's really not. It's, it's meant to help with the region as a whole, you know, mm -hmm. especially here where we're seeing this a lot right now. Uh, you were talking about the economic side of things. Mm -hmm. you know, we are seeing it a little bit right now in State College that it would be great to have a little more diversity when it comes to uh, industry in this town, because with the students being gone for, you know, for half of the semester, that really hurt a lot of the stuff. Okay. Oh, some questions in the Q&A. Yeah. Damn. There we go. Awesome. Does having um, a business organization startup help making one's job application better? I believe so. Um, I, I think that what, if you can show business owners that other business owners, other hiring managers, that you have some initiative and what you've learned from that. So if it's just like, hey, I started this clothing line and then when you get the question asked like, oh, well, what'd you learn from it? And you don't have an answer to that question, then it might not help you as much. But you should have answers to that type of thing. I tell, so a lot of people are like, hey, you know, you had to put some money into this app and then you just like let it go. I go, yeah, but I put a lot less money into this app than I would have if I went and got an MBA. And I learned a ton. I learned about accounting. I learned about coding. I learned a ton of things. So you learn a lot. You just have to make sure that you can articulate that. Uh, I think initiative is a huge transferable skill that employers are really seeking and some of the webinars and the connections we've made through all of this um, going on in the world right now. That's what they're curious about. How have you been, have, what initiative have you taken and pivoted 
to adapt to this situation. So if that's through your own business and startup, I'm sure that will really resonate with them. 100%. And I, I, as an economist, I always talk about cost benefit and decision making. That's what economics is all about. So even if you start a business and it fails or you have to go and do something else, like you still put that on, on a resume and talk about it because being able to make those decisions of like, hey, I was doing this thing. It wasn't working out. Um, and I realized this other thing was better. So I pivoted to this or I changed it. Like that shows so much initiative. It shows that you're mature in decision making. All that stuff really helps out. Uh, David, hi David. Uh, what was the biggest challenge I had when I tried to start a business? Uh, the, the first time I started the business, the biggest challenge I had was just knowing like the legal, like what I needed to do. So I'm like, okay, I want to have an official business. So I contacted a law firm here in town and realized it was going to be about $1,500 to get an official LLC, a limited liability corporation. I went, oh, I don't know if I wanna dump 1500 into an idea that I'm not 100% sold on. And that's when I found the Launchbox and they helped me so much. I mean, that, that's the reason why the whole initiative started is for local startups to have easy. Then once you get that part set up, it's really just testing your assumptions. So this is the biggest thing I tell all student startups is, of course you believe in your idea. Why, if you, if you, you wouldn't start it if you weren't believing in your idea. So you have to write out, and this is an exercise that we did in the accelerator. You write out the things that you assume. So like, I assume people want to take photos of dogs. I assumed that people wanted to look back at their memories of their dogs that they've checked in months ago. So you write down all of these assumptions and then you go and you test them. You actually do customer discovery, which is a really big word in entrepreneurship these days. You go out and you talk to your potential customers and you ask them in a way that you're not leading them questions and you try and just gather a ton of data. So the toughest part uh, for me, A, was just what resources are there out there to get it legally started. But then B was, okay, now that I have this idea, how do I make sure that it works? And there's a, there's a book that you, can, that you can Google called The Mom Test. Uh, and the reason why it's called The Mom Test is because when you tell your mom that you have an idea, most likely they're gonna be like, yeah, that's a good idea. But like, you gotta pass that, you gotta get past that. Uh, so that's a really good, you can find that on PDF if you just Google, it's called The Mom Test. So yeah, that would be my hardest, my hardest start. All right. Great questions. Yeah. Well, this was really fun, Katie. I'm glad that uh, yeah. you know, we had some, some people hanging out and yeah. uh, I know this will be posted so you can send it to uh, your, uh, send it to all your contacts. And, and again, feel free to connect with me, uh, Twitter, Instagram. I do have a Facebook page, but I don't use that as much. Uh, you know, I'm growing out of that like most people. <laughs> I might need to do that on TikTok soon. Oh boy, I can't wait for those videos. <laughs> well, thank you so much, James. And thank you for everyone for joining us again. The video once or the webinar once it's uh, been shot back to me from Zoom, we will get that up on our YouTube channel and post the link on the gethired.la.psu.edu website. There's a lot of resources right now um, for those pivoting and navigating um, COVID-19 and the, the different world of recruiting. Um, so please take a look at that. So with that said, thank you all for being here. And we will be here again on Thursday at the same time to meet with Jonathan Hayes. He's the Vice President of Human Resources at Verizon Media. He's a great friend of the college. And we'll talk, be talking about HR and executive leadership. Awesome. Well, again, thank you, everybody. Thank you.